Hi, everyone. Uh, I wanted to start by thanking The Atlantic and the Star Tribune for putting on this amazing event. We are really excited to be here. And thank you, Catherine, for joining me on stage to talk about something so important as the future of local news. You're welcome. So I'm here representing Google, and I want to just take a moment to share uh, why we care so deeply about news at Google. Uh, we're a search engine, and it's absolutely critical that we have an open and flourishing web so that we can fulfill our mission statement of making all information useful and accessible to the world. So it's absolutely critical that we have a flourishing open web. So we spend a lot of time supporting the news industry through the Google News Initiative and also through our partnerships with publishers like Grand Media Group, uh, as well as The Atlantic and the Star Tribune. So really excited to have Catherine here today. As, as they mentioned, Catherine is the chief innovation officer at Grand Media Group who owns and operates seven local stations in the US and in my opinion is really one of the most forward thinking publishers in the country. Uh, so excited to have Catherine here to have a different perspective. And I think a lot of times when we talk about the future of local news, we think about it through the lens of a legacy print organization. Uh, but I think there's a lot of great innovation coming out of the broadcast groups. So we're going to have a conversation about that today. So Catherine, to kick it off, why don't you talk a little bit about why you think it's so important for broadcasters to start innovating now? Well, I, I would honestly tell you we should have been innovating a lot faster many years ago, but hopefully we're starting to move in that direction more than we have in the past. Um, you know, we have a really unique relationship with our audiences. We hear from Pew that we are the most trusted local news source, um, and I think that we shouldn't squander that relationship. So looking at our unique position that we have today, we have to learn to, uh, you know, take what we have today and put it towards some of those really exciting um, opportunities for the future. And I'll be honest and tell you that right now broadcasters aren't moving quick enough. Mm -hmm. When was the moment in which Grand Media Group really clicked for innovation? Well, I think actually our, our president and CEO, she uh, started with us in 2012. And at the time, we had literally a, I always say, a one and a half digital team at the corporate level. It was literally three people. Um, I was one of them that had half station responsibilities and half corporate responsibilities. So between the three of us, we made one and a half people. She came in and literally said, you have all these things you're trying to accomplish, and I can tell that you're not able to do the good work that we need to do. And so she said to me at the time, do you think that you can do it in Detroit, which is where I'm based? And I said, yes, I think I can. And she said, do you think you can find enough good people? And I said, yes, I think I can. So we have now in Detroit 28 people on the digital team making up everything from content to technology. And we have what I think is the best a development company in the world, and um, we're really focused on that. It really has happened just in the last few years. Fantastic. Why do you think other broadcast groups may be slower to innovate? Well, we're what you consider a boutique broadcast group because there's a whopping seven stations in our group. Um, you know, I'm sure you all know that there are many bigger broadcasters. Sinclair, for instance, is over 150 stations across the country. Those are very big ships that they have to steer. And so I think that it actually puts us in a huge advantage because of the fact that we can move a lot faster than they can. If we need to roll something out against our seven stations, it's a lot easier than doing that against 150. Absolutely. So some of the challenges facing the broadcast industry are, are definitely different than legacy print, uh, but similar at the same time. I'm mm -hmm. curious to hear how you are combating some of these threats. Well, you know, I'm sure anyone who's familiar with the broadcast business understands that we were literally thrown like a great big life, like life preserver a few years ago, which is called the retransmission consent. That is the fees that the satellite and ca cable companies pay us for our stations. And for a long time, they weren't paying local stations for our content. And that changed usually around 2010, 2011. And that literally gave us this immediate boom to our overall revenue. And, and what that did was it literally hid the fact that our, our advertising revenues are suffering just like other local media companies and media companies in general. And so um, we've been very lucky because we've been incredibly profitable. We've had retransmission and, and political really keeping us in a great 
position revenue wise, but both of those things, as you all know, are under extreme threat. So what we're trying to do is really look at diversification of revenue and say, you know, we have to really first and foremost get our people to realize that this is happening. And you'd be surprised how many people still feel like this is not a situation where we have to move as quick as we need to. I'm always stunned when I go and actually hear from people at the general manager level. They don't feel a lot of pressure to change. Wow. And it's kind of scary when you actually sit and talk to station leaders because they still are making a lot of money and they really don't feel the pinch and they're also saying I've got five years and I'm out. So um, it's, it's a severe situation for us that I'm pretty vocal about whenever I'm talking to anybody when we're talking about the broadcast business in general. So you talked about revenue diversification. What does that look like at, at Grand Media Group? Well, first and foremost, I think that we're really looking at what we're really good at. And one of the things that we're, you know, obviously video as being something that we've always had this um, unique position in the marketplace. I got really frustrated a few years ago and looked at the fact that we were literally letting Facebook take away what was our value to the, to the markets, specifically with things like Facebook Live. Um, we would be covering a hurricane in Houston and I would literally see our entire team on, on Facebook Live and no one putting any sort of energy towards our own products. And so I immediately said, we've got to stop doing things like that. And so um, making sure that video is, um, you know, putting the right kind of technology and resources behind it so we stay ahead of the pack, frankly, and not giving up our, our dominance in that position. And clearly we know that video is a place where you can actually make money. So if we continue to innovate on the video side and stay ahead of the pack, I think that that's going to allow us to continue to, you know, find new ways of developing new revenue streams. The other thing that we're really looking at is, believe it or not, membership for broadcast. And when I first started talking to different people about this idea, um, especially people coming from maybe a more traditional newspaper background, they kind of couldn't understand what we were talking about because of course they're thinking it's more paywall or subscription based. And the truth is, is that our local television stations, because of our unique relationship with the audience, the fact that we have these people that are in living rooms and bedrooms and are coming across the screen every day, that relationship is insanely strong. We also know too that we can move the needle. And you know, I have people on my team that have come from different backgrounds and different media, and they'll say, we ask the audience to do something and they do it. I've never seen the power of this before. Yeah. And so kind of leaning into that and exploring what membership could meet on the broadcast side, mm -hmm. everything from direct to consumer to being able to actually look at events, all things that are being done out there, but frankly, things that we always do most times for our advertisers and not actually for ourselves. So we're really looking into that and exploring that in a big way. We got a Google GNI grant um, to be able to help support that effort this year. So very excited to be leading the entire industry on looking at what membership can mean. We are also really excited about what that's going to look like. And I know you launched a pilot back um, last year with San Antonio Station. Okay. I'm curious to hear what did, what did membership look like in San Antonio? Well, we have um, this powerhouse television station in San Antonio, KSAT, and that's really one of the reasons why I wanted to work with them. This was actually through the Knight Funded Table Stakes Project um, at the Arizona State University. We, we went into that and we had to come up with some big goal and do something that was not on our roadmap for the future, and that's really when I wanted to explore membership. And I remember our coaches from Table Stakes said, I don't know if that's a good idea, Catherine. I think you should just try to grow your highly engaged users. And I was like, nah, yeah. I don't think that's what I want to do. I think we really want to see what this can look like. So um, just like any other first project, we learned a lot along the way. And there's still things that I would tell you I wish that we would have done differently. It was really about exploring our relationship with the audience and frankly, listening to them more. You know, broadcast is this one to many where we were like, we need to be more like one to one and really listen to our audiences and, and, and fill that unique void in some of our communities that we are seeing and that we have to make sure that we are doing, um, actually creating our content and the news that we create so much different than what we do on the broadcast TV side. So 
Um, it really turned, I'll be honest, into a, an events business. Um, that's not what I really want this membership relationship to turn into. I want it to be much more robust than that and really be about all the, and when you're looking at an audience funnel, that part in the middle, which is all about making sure that we're answering our consumers and doing what's right for them, and both our audience and our advertisers so that we have a better relationship with all of them. So that really is where we're going with this in the coming year and where we really want to explore it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Catherine, and congrats for all that you have done with Grand Media Group. Thank you.